If you're a fan of old school bodybuilding, then make sure to check out Subs the Movie. Filmmaker Alex Ardenti explores the $40 billion sports supplement industry, delving into the origins, evolution, and current state of supplements used by millions of fitness enthusiasts worldwide, available at Amazon and Vimeo. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookroom here. Today we're going to look at some incredible Bronze Era bodybuilders from India from the 1920s and 1930s and how at this time prior to the discovery and creation of testosterone could develop such muscular and shredded physiques. I recently came across an Instagram post from Dr. Eric Helms from about three years ago reminding me of the Indian bodybuilding pioneers Bishnu Charangosh and Sen Gupta who wrote a wonderful book on the bodybuilding practices of bodybuilders back in the Bronze Era and if you have never seen it the pictures showcasing the Indian bodybuilders in this book are nothing but short of spectacular. Truly impressive. Indian bodybuilders, like many natural bronze athletes at the time, had great physiques and appeared to be ahead of their time. The book Muscle Control and Barbell Exercise was written by Ghosh and Sen Gupta, physical culturists and trainers in India in 1930. In short, this book describes the methods these Bronze Era athletes used, which were namely bodybuilding and muscle control. All of the pictures of the lifters shown here are from this book, you know, circa 1930 or earlier. And as you flick through this book, you quickly realize that some of these guys aren't just muscular, but ripped to shreds. I mean, look at this guy. He's just, <laughs> you see every freaking strand of muscle on that chest and arms and delt. It's incredible. The text outlines how to perform the various barbell and dumbbell bodybuilding exercises bronze era athletes relied on. And it's a very complete workout. And the book also introduces the trainee to the art of muscle control an ancient method very similar to yoga that teaches one how to isolate and flex muscles and pose. Little known to most is that Bishnu Charan Ghosh was born into a family of yogis and many of his students would also become very famous yoga teachers. It is important to note that physical culture was not just a western phenomena or with concentrated practice in just Europe and the United States. Instead, there is a rich culture going far back in India and in Asia, in fact, of wrestling, yoga, and lifting in more contemporary times. The authors would go on to train some of the champion Indian bodybuilders of the 1950s, including Walt Baptiste, who I have already introduced on this channel, as well as Monatosh Roy, who became the first Indian bodybuilder to win the NABBA Mr. Universe in 1951, proving the effectiveness of the techniques found in this book taught by Ghosh and Gupta. The bodybuilding workout featured in this book is a full body workout consisting of barbell curls and triceps extensions, chest pressing off the wrestler's bridge as there was no flat bench for pressing back then, and barbell rowing barbell shoulder presses, squats and pullovers. It is clear that such workouts were used by bodybuilders during the silver era to also build marvelous natural physiques without the assistance of steroids. In my opinion, the most fascinating part of this text is the section on muscle control, which is very similar to Maxik's masterpiece on the subject titled Muscle Control, which was written during the Bronze Era and published back in 1910. And it describes the many poses we use nowadays, such as poses similar to the mandatory poses in bodybuilding, like the front lat spread, front double biceps, side chest pose, rear lat spread, rear double biceps, side triceps, abs and thighs, and of course, the most muscular pose, as well as more classical poses, like the single biceps pose, and vacuum poses of different varieties. I mean, some of these just literally mirror those of Steve Reeves and Frank Zane, who would also later use these poses. It's very, very clear, isn't it? Also, there are a variety of yoga poses or asanas that require superior control of the abdominal muscles. These were actually practiced by bodybuilders during the early to mid 1950s and such displays of superior abdominal control were displayed on stage as a display of muscle control. 
and health and vitality, which of course has been completely lost in today's bodybuilding scene. We are in fact seeing the opposite now, aren't we? It would be nice, therefore, to have a revival of such techniques on stage, promoting natural bodybuilding, health, and masterful muscular control, and I encourage you natural athletes out there to revive this practice of muscle control, which are also health-giving techniques that are truly impressive to see. Unfortunately, there is no detailed information about the diet that these men followed except for the wise advice of eating to live and not living to eat, which echoes, of course, today's advice in eating with moderation and for the nutritional value of the food itself. I would assume, of course, that these physical culturists would consume a whole natural food diet with plenty of fresh raw milk and eggs, as well as fresh fruits and vegetables, which were available back then. I would also assume that being from India, they would have access to legumes, which are high protein sources of food, and would combine these with the raw milk and eggs to have a very good high protein diet, rich with fresh fruits and vegetables. Finally, it is also interesting to note that the athletes featured in the book Muscle Control and Barbell Exercise were all round athletes, being champion weightlifters, gymnasts and strongmen, and master posers, true artists, not only concerned with building muscle, but the complete control of the mind and body, and the ability to display the beauty of the human physique as was more common centuries ago during the Renaissance. So I do hope you have enjoyed this video looking at the muscular and shredded physiques of Indian bodybuilders from the 1920s and 1930s. If you have enjoyed watching the video, please give the video a like, subscribe to this channel for more content like this and click the bell button to be notified of future videos. And don't forget to leave your comments in the comment section. Are you guys interested in learning more about these Indian bodybuilding pioneers? Or are you interested in learning more about bronze era pioneers? and their bodybuilding and health giving techniques in general, such as muscle control. Let me know in the comment section. For those interested in learning more about muscle control or the techniques found within these books, you will find these at www.goldenerabookum.com, of course. That's it from me. This is the Golden Era Bookum saying bye for now. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Vince Deronda's approach to bodybuilding, his principles and all these tips of wisdom that he has, I mean, there's so much stuff that probably hasn't been proven by science and it will take science to prove or disprove uh, Vince. But to be honest, these three books, I believe, which I call the classic physique bundle, are the best books that Vince ever came out with. And they, of course, are the Wild Physique, the Master Series and the Pro Series. Have a look at it this way. The Wild Physique, I believe, is like the ABCs of Vince Deronda's principles to bodybuilding. He teaches you the exercises and his principles. But how do you put them together? Well, the Master Series is a 14-month program of using all of these principles, all of the diets that Vince came out with, all of the exercises. And believe me, it's a brilliant, brilliant program. Many people have used it. I know I know personally a lot of uh, bodybuilders that have actually used it and uh, f made fantastic results with it. And of course, the Pro Series was a book that he came out with later on, specially targeted for uh, getting into competition. It's just the, these three books, as I call it, the classic physique bundle, uh, Vince's best work, and available, of course, at www.goldenerabookum.com. Now, the Pro Series of Bodybuilding, which was targeted for professional bodybuilders, is a contains six programs, each of which go for two months each, so it's a whole year, uh, again, in preparation for competition. Online training is now available, including my new program, Novice to Classic, a program geared towards beginners and novices looking at developing a classic physique, as well as Classic Cut, geared at those who wish to lose weight and gain muscle fast. Details available at www.goldenerabooking.com. Need a bodybuilding poster for your gym or office? Then check out ironmanmagazinearchive.smugmug.com for the highest quality posters on the planet. Scroll through the galleries of all the legends, including greats such as Arnold, Frank Zane, Sergio Oliva, Serge Nubre, Tom Platz, and Larry Scott, and much, much more, and select your poster now. Your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm for merchandise, including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, 
phone cases, and much, much more. Once again, at teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm. Become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. To take full advantage of my collaborations, use code GEB20 with nspnutrition.com and vincegeronda.com as well as code bookworm12 at osl.com for a discount at checkout. I don't think that Bill Phillips looked at it as I want to compete against them. I want to destroy them. If they pass legislation basically making any type of food supplement a prescription item, that would be the end, the death of the entire food supplement industry. In the 1960s, the sports supplement industry was barely emerging. I think the reason why Joe Weider was so successful was he had Arnold on his side. He wasn't selling supplements. He was in the dream business. Joe Weider was a marketing genius. People would say the promotions or the endorsements back then were cheesy. To me, it wasn't. I loved it. Fitness was taking off. You know, fitness became cool. You had a lot of readers that wanted to be like the stars that they idolized. Bill's strength is his marketing savvy. He's a marketing genius. Got it, got it. It's only vitamin. The right of American citizens to have free access to dietary supplements of their choice. Consult your physician, you might as well consult the next guy you meet on the street. They don't know a damn thing about vitamins and nutrition. The dietary supplement industry became the number two most regulated industry. Nuclear, dietary supplements, pharmaceutical. We are more regulated than drugs. They come in and you uh, need to allow the FDA. They have jurisdiction. The enforcement is kind of the questionable side of it and how do they really get a handle on this monster? A lot of people tell me that the dietary supplement industry is completely unregulated. It's the wild, wild west out there. It's a free for all. That could not be further from the truth. A dietary supplement is not allowed to have a side effect. I always say the pharmaceutical has to have a minimum of 100 side effects in order for it to be a drug. And now, it's a $40 billion industry and growing. That's the really interesting thing, is the cast of characters from the 80s, when it was kind of iffy, to now, when it's a lot more legitimate. They made it sound cutting edge, revolutionary, and different, and I want that. That's cool. We are in this industry to improve our health. It's not just a vanity project here. We're working on our lifeline. We eat a certain way to improve our health. We train a certain way to improve our health. Supplements are just that. They supplement your work, your graft, your nutrition. Uh, they demonize dietary supplements, but they say all you need is real food. Well, what's a real food? They pump you up and get you harder, stronger, faster, bigger. Doc, I want to take this weight gain. I want to take this pre-workout. That this, no, no way. I, that stuff, we don't know what's in that. It could be, no way. I'm not going to give you, it's going to kill the industry, bottom line. So I must have drank so much protein powder from age 15 to 18 that my head was going to explode. <laughs> I believed in metrics so much that I would probably punch somebody in the face if they tried to take it away from me. 